The Great Central Main Line, also known as the London Extension of the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, was built and opened by 1899. The last main line to be built in England and it had a life up until 1969 with sections closing from 1966 and a lot of that was the parts that ran directly through Nottinghamshire. Once closed a lot of the land was redeveloped, built on and sadly obliterated. However some sections do still exist and we can find them and we can walk many of them today. In this video and walk, I shall be taking a look at the section between Linby and Borwall. Linby is a small little village just here, and Borwall a little way down here, and Hucknall is right in the centre. Notice the three different coloured lines. Blue is the Great Central Railway, yellow is the Midland Railway, which is still running today. You can get to Worksop and Mansfield on that, and the red one, the Great Northern Railway. Moving a little bit closer, this is where we're beginning at Limby, where the Great Central crossed over both of the other two railways below them. The Midland and also the Great Northern had their own stations long since closed, and it loops around, and we're going to meet up with Hucknall Central Station, or the site of where this once was. I've got quite a few photos to show you of what that once looked like in operation and after closure, before we carry on and head off to where Bullwall whole halt was this one had a very very short life managed to get a few photos there is quite a bit to look at there's a few diversions but it's all in all a very nice walk and has also given me ideas for future walks too let's get down to the track bed and begin so to begin with i'm down on the former great northern railway went off towards sutton in ashfield and off towards Nottingham in that direction going forward Limby station was just down there so just here for our great central walk today there used to be a viaduct crossing this line and it also used to cross the active line over there the former Midland Railway which is between Worksop and Nottingham today and this track bed continues on on an embankment off towards where Annersley sheds once was they're absolutely huge the yards the sheds and those collieries down there as well so what we're going to do to pick up our Great Central route going that way today is follow this track bed down to where Limby Station was, Limby Colliery, and then there were stations along this route. We had Hucknall Central and Bulwall Hall Halt. Don't know if we can get that far, but I'm going to try. So let's push on. Sight of Limby Station on this line and then we'll follow the Great Central track bed towards Hucknall. So moving south, the Great Central Railway came away from where Annesley's shed would have been in the far distance and heading towards where it first crossed the Great Northern Railway, what we're on now, and also the Midland Railway a little further down. Note the bridge on the right hand side, that is still there, we'll see that in a little photo shortly. Now also down at the base of here is this milepost which denotes that we are 72 miles away from Manchester or 75 miles by road, so the railway was effectively shorter wasn't it? This was a permission photograph, so please don't go wandering onto the farmland. And this is exactly how it used to look where we've just began our video. The right hand side is coming from Annesley, the milepost. It's roughly where that archway is on the right hand side, the one that's open, not the bricked up one. In the background, there's that bridge I mentioned on the drone footage previously. That is still there and behind us we'd be heading to Limby Station immediately behind us. This is the view looking the opposite way same viaduct above and Limby station just in the distance will walk past that site very very shortly this is a beautiful photograph isn't it this is taken from that bridge that is still there looking towards Limby station i'd love to know if there was another photo taken right before this one it actually did show the full train going across the top so the Great Northern Railway's Limby Station was right here two platforms opened in 1882 but it was close to passengers Wow, not long after, June 1916. It did continue to see freight services though right up until 1965, but what a very, very short life this station had. But of course there was another Limby station right on the Midland Railway. That's where we're gonna pop over to now before we can pick up the route of the Great Central. Two stations in such close proximity in such a tiny little village at the time. Still quite small now, really. It's never gonna work, was it? So the Great Central has now crossed over the active Midland Railway. Midland Railway had Limby Station just there. That closed in 1965. Limby Colliery 
opened in 1873. That is all that up there. And it lasted until 1988. And our Great Central track bed came across here and sort of went alongside the colliery. So once crossed the Great Northern Railway and leaving that behind, it then went on to cross the Midland Railway. The one that you can see has still got track down and is still operational today. And on the left, you can see the level crossing of the main road there and once where the other Limby station was and Limby Colliery was in the distance. A nice old photo taken by David Ford, I believe to be in the 70s, the level crossing behind us and also the bridge with the Great Central on it and the colliery in the background and on the right hand side, Limby Colliery. And this is where the Great Central crosses Wig Hay Road. Absolutely stunning to see that going underneath that, isn't it? You've got the level crossing just in the distance. We've come from the left and we are going off to the right, heading towards Hucknall. So coming away from the Midland Railways, Limby Station, we have to push on along here. This is just a path that's been put in. Spall heaps are on the left from Limby Colliery. Track bed would have been the other side of those houses you can see just there. And then we'll meet up with it just to touch down here. And this is it. This is our former track bed right here. So we've just come from down here. You can tell we're on the embankment now. Look, look, there's some steps down to Wig Hay Road. B6011 down there. Our great central track bed is there, heading off back to Annesley. So we now get to walk it. We're gonna continue on, look, and we actually get to follow the great central railway's track bed. And we're moving away from Wig Hay Road that I've just shown you where we met up with a track bed with the housing estate forming a kind of a wedge down there in between the track bed and that road, the road going off over there, we're going off over there. And remnants of the colliery are just there, look. Limby colliery spall heaps is all that mass of land and trees. Looks like a piece of coal just there, doesn't it? It's coal, isn't it? Oh, well, that's been sat there. So quite weirdly now, as we approach the top end of this part of the track bed, we just walk down here, the embankment just disappears. It goes down and it's not like there would have been a bridge here at one time and the embankment carries on because the track bed stays at a very low level look going forward. It's just missing. Look, embankment, no embankment. So where did that go? So carrying on, we're still at that low level. We've got to cross over Annesley Road just down here. And it goes behind a Tesco or in front of a Tesco Express, if you know the area. And then we have to leave the track bed for a little bit. And then we can pick it up again around about where Hucknall Central Station once stood. So on the approach to Annesley Road, we've got to cross over that. You see the track bed has eventually made its way up again but i'm going to say there used to be a bridge here and the railway went underneath and this is a beautiful photograph isn't it showing us where the line went underneath annesley road which is now completely filled in and you've got the restaurants and the tesco on the right hand side of this shot so this one is heading north towards annesley and also sheffield but we're going to be going the opposite way where this train has come from so the track pad disappeared under a bridge just there completely filled in and gone and headed off down there where there's a park. So a quick update on where we are. So we've just come from up here at the very top. Limby is just off the map and we've just passed under Annesley Road and I've got to take a diversion through all this built up housing estate where the track bed has gone and pick it up a little closer to Hucknall. And now we finally pick up the track bed again. That's Wood Lane just there. Looks like it could have been a bridge just there that has been filled in. I think there may have been a cutting. So we're back on our track bed and we're going to push on a little bit up here away from where we started and towards Hucknall Central Station. There's too many properties on both sides as well so I'm not going to be flying the drone around here respecting privacy and all that. Might be able to a little bit further down but not, not here. Next up we have to go across Garden Road. You can see the track bed's taking a bit of a jump up so there must have been a bridge here again. Not sure if we're going to get to continue. Once we get here, if we've got to walk around. 
So crossing over Garden Road, track bed shot across and came out of a bridge just here and you can see all that open land there, look. That's all now been turned into an area for horses, a grazing area, paddock, whatever you want to call it. It goes on for about a quarter of a mile before it would have intercepted the other side of the A6009, Hucknall Central Station. Hucknall Central Station is down here. Two platforms, it closed in 1963 and it opened in 1899, so short life just like the line. I can see a hump on the A6009 which would show us that the railway did pass underneath this road. And look at that wall just there, just showing you. That is obviously a railway wall, isn't it? Track bed, there's the other one just there, look. So now we've arrived where Hucknall Central Station once stood. This is the view from Watnall Road, the A6009, looking back towards where we've come from, but we couldn't walk this little bit, could we? But that is the line off towards Annesley. We get to see a nice little aerial shot just here. Look, the station is just down there. Look, island platform. Again, Watnall Road. We've just been looking at the line as if it was going off to the left. We're going to shortly be heading off towards Bullwall, off to the right. Nice, beautiful photo taken from down on the platform. Look, this is going to be around about the 1950s, I believe. And this one, probably around about the same time taken from Watnall Road, heading off towards Annesley Shed or the Midlands Coalfields. This is another one, passenger working. This one's heading south towards Nottingham. Absolutely beautiful. Looking a little bit overgrown either side of the station, but it is still open in this shot, dating from the 1950s. Light engine working. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? So we will pick up the track bed again. This is Farley's Lane. If you're going to walk this, Farley's Lane will take us towards where Bullwall Hall Holt was. So once leaving the site of Hucknall Central Station, I've had to go along a few rows. Track bed has been built on, embankment has been flattened and obliterated. And we've got to pick up again just before we hit up with the A611 road, which is right at the very bottom of this map. Notice both of the other two lines, the Midland and the Great Northern, are still on the right-hand side. All of these lines running pretty much parallel in this area. So let's go find the track bed again before we go up onto a steep embankment. Okay, we've bypassed it all. All of Hucknall is over there. And we're back on the track bed again. But briefly, I'm going to show you where it would have been. Straight across there. Built on, yet again. All the way across there. And now we're gonna go here. So to bypass it, I've just come down this path and a track bed comes along here. And then we're gonna pass over another road just there. It's peculiar, I do a lot of walks and I find most of them what I do are probably form the Midland or Great Northern Railway routes. When it comes to the Great Central, there just seems to be huge chunks that were just built on immediately. What, what was the difference? I mean, there might be places where the Great Central, you can walk long stretches but I never seem to be able to do videos of Great Central routes, which are fairly long distances. And at the same time, you know, I haven't got to divert onto roads. What's that all about? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is Park Drive Bridge down there and Farley's Road on the right-hand side where the semi-detached houses are in the background. You've got the embankment, which we have just met up with again, and the A611 would later on be built from left to right, going through where that embankment is today. So leaving that behind, look, where we just walked the track bed appears to go up onto an embankment. Steps made out of old sleepers. So the embankment must have been flattened and removed as it gets to the top. We're back up on the track bed, look. So quite a step up, but it's nice to be walking on it again. So we're going to cross over a main road down here. I think we have to cross it. We can't go under it or over it. 
and then we'll pick up the track bed again as we edge closer towards Bull Hole Holt. That didn't last long, did it? I think we get to pick it up again on the other side of the road. The A611 this is down here. I'm gonna cross it and I'll see you back on the track bed on the other side. Evidence of ballast down there, look, you see it? Quite a bit just through there. Lots of ballast. That's what it looks like up top. Not a lot to see. Lots of fields over there. Back towards Hucknall, that way. Another thing, while I previously mentioned that about a lot of the Great Central track beds being built on, structures just seem to get filled in or demolished pretty quickly as well. After closures, just stuff seems to just be it's as if they didn't want a reminder of what it was yeah a lot of all the other railway lines around nottinghamshire and parts of the uk bridges tunnels viaducts quite a lot of them are still there but we've not been able to walk under or over any bridges any trace of anything like that where all the roads are we've intercepted today even now i'm about to go down the embankment look now whether this has been carved out just for access from one side of the other after the line closed I don't know the track beds up there look we are losing it and we're coming down to a great big void whether that was a bridge or not I can't see any evidence so far that it once was no I'm not sure about this so has this been carved out since closure or did there used to be a bridge here Old concrete section fence post there, look. Something else, look, too. I bet that's just a concrete block that's been put on to stop cars coming over. Or there's a stone here, look. There we go. The embankment was the route to the Great Central Main Line, which ran from Manchester to London via Sheffield, Nottingham, Leicestershire, and Rugby. The line was originally intended to travel as far as Paris, but the Ambition was never fully realised. Get my head out of the way. It's quite nice, isn't it? So it states embankment, but nothing to do with a bridge. So back up the other side we go. There used to be quarries over there. They've been long gone, they have. But back up the embankment to the track bed level again. It's a concrete post there, look just like the one that we saw down at the bottom where that dugout embankment was, where the V-shape was. Whether it's a fence post, I don't know, because there's none others. Anyone know? It's another old post, can you see that? A uh, diagonal angle, it's different to the other posts we've seen. We're almost where the station was now, Ball Hall Holt was down here with two platforms. Another post there, look. So Bull Hall Holt was right about here, very, very short life. 1909 that opened, but it closed in 1930, 21 years. That's not very good, is it? All this land around, track bed going straight down there. So as we approach and arrive at Bull Hall Holt station, the A611 is up here. We've followed the embankment down and we're on the outskirts of Ball itself just down here so that's where Bullwell Hall Holt once was and you can see where the track beds would have all come very close to each other again all those railways that we've run parallel with this entire time 
Now, Ball Hall Holt Station was opened on the 24th of April 1909. Now, the Holt's main purpose was to serve the Nottingham City Golf Course. However, during World War II, it was also used for troops and it never appeared in the public timetables until 1911. There's pretty much nothing else to see along this route now as we get closer into Nottingham until you get further towards the city centre. So for now, this is going to be it for this railway walk. So I do hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to do a bit more around here. Cinder Hill off towards Nuttall. There's a bit to do over there. And any other suggestions, please comment below. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now. As always, thank you very much for watching. There are other videos on this channel that you may like and enjoy. So please like, subscribe and comment below as previously mentioned. All of the social medias are popping up at the bottom. Instagram, X, Facebook and Twitter for little clips of where I'm going and where I've been. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you on there.